Okay guys, so welcome back to the next part of uh, painting Loken video. So uh, in this video, we're going to be painting the um, the backpack, the pauldrons and the straps here and on the back here, um, as well as any grey areas, so the underside of the boots um, or black areas, I should say, you know, highlighting uh, the darker areas under the so underside of the boots and things like that, and also painting the cape. That way, we've got all the colours done except for the metallics. So, uh, first of all, I've got some colours laid out or paints laid out here. I've got my white, uh, which is white scar, my Abaddon black. And well, this bit here is just some ink by darkness. I put it in the wrong place, but some Abaddon black and some Eschen grey. Um, the Eschen grey I find has a little bit of a slightly blue tone to it, um, which is nice for for highlights. So uh, again, because we've got, we'll start on the pauldrons, and because we've got the uh, the light coming from this angle, basically we're going to end up with a highlight. You know, if we treat these as round objects, we're going to have this highlight spot here, and it's going to get lighter as it comes out, and then darker, uh, sorry, darker as it comes out, and then darker down this way. So the back of the pauldron is pretty much going to be black. And then with this one, because the highlight point is going to be pretty much over where the eye is, we're not going to get too much of a highlight around the edge. So we're going to be pretty much black um, around the edge, just a little bit of light gray towards the bottom here um, obviously the eye is going to be coloured um, which we'll also be doing in this this part of the video so uh, let's get started on these blacks so first of all we'll go in with some eschen grey and this is going to be our mid-tone darken it up slightly with the black now obviously with the black, the black that's already on here is as dark as we can go. So that is what we need to sort of change and brighten up. So all I'm gonna do is work across trying to ignore these uh, studs. We've got this battle damage here. I'm going to leave that dark in there. Um, just because we can then highlight the edge of it and make it stand out a bit. So, working on this shield, uh, this pauldron first. You can see that with how sort of thin down this is, it has that slightly blue tone. Hopefully, the camera will pick this up. All we're going to do is just work around the pauldron, focusing it up this top end, and then as we get towards sort of this centre half, we're going to start fading it off, and that will become the black on the back. So all I'm doing here is with the water on the brush. Just picking off some of that wet paint along here and then stippling it just to give it a slightly broken up mottled effect. Um, that will fade to almost nothing, but that will give us a good mid, um, a good blend on the, uh, the pauldron there. So, what I'm trying to do here is use the camera as the, uh, the light source. This is pretty much the direction that we're coming from. So my highlight is going to be pretty much along this area here. And then it's going to get darker obviously as we come under. So now we're coming down here. We've got this little area here and this. Okay, and the same thing as the um, 
the greens. Just going to build this up in the areas where it can be seen a little bit. Obviously, not worrying about getting it on anything else. Right, and now we can add a little bit more white to oh, a little bit of white to this. Obviously, it's going to thicken it up slightly, so just a touch of water to thin it. And then, same again. And this time, we're going to focus around this sort of area. going to be quite bright but we are going to glaze over this and uh, tone it back down a bit. But we're going to try and get it up to that level that we need first. Rinse the brush very quickly and then again we can just feather this just by stippling right along that edge and bring it down slightly and what we're going to do is use this as highlight for any black areas um, as far as I can tell the only black stuff on this are the or is the belt um, now it does show a little bit the way that the uh, the cape is on here that's a small um, bit of battle damage there but all I'm doing is just stippling this along the uh, the edge there And then we've got this piece here, and just stipple it down. And then the same on this side. It doesn't need to be too light, it is all under cover. And obviously with the light source coming this direction. Now because the light source is coming like this, and this area is more um, parallel with the ground, or horizontal with the ground, I do want to get a little bit of more light on this. So. What I'm going to do darken that back up again with the uh, the black, the mix that is, darken the mix back up, and then just sort of stipple it on. All right, then I can take. A little bit more white. And as I did with Abaddon, what I'm trying to do is build this up to that nice bright white highlight that will be on the top there, you know, that reflective highlight. So again focusing this in a smaller area now I'm not worrying about getting right up against the uh, the studs here as they are going to be shaded around anyway just want to get some of this highlight area and then blend it in a little bit and then again 
the same along this edge here. Again, a little bit more white. And I'm going to use this as an edge highlight along this bottom edge, but sort of break it up a little bit. And then we want this pretty much just in this area here. And again, stipple it just to add a little bit of texture. And obviously, that stud there is going to be quite bright compared to some of these other ones. pauldron obviously black on the back gets lighter to that highlight on the front and then we don't need to highlight any of these other areas I and mean, then we could put a bit of texture maybe just along here with uh, just a little bit of stippling of this whiter color and that there is blue tack not paint which is why it is smearing so we'll pull that off later all right now i think the handle for this i'm going to do in the same reddish brown that is on the straps here um, just so it ties it across a little bit um, now we can add a little bit of highlight along this edge and that's not too much because again it's black but we are coming across um, you know, it is in an almost open light area. Just on the in, inside of the elbow here, where you got the under armour. Okay, and now, without knocking the camera, I just want to get some super bright extra light in here doesn't need too much Okay, so moving on now, we're going to do the uh, the straps on the uh, the back and the front here. And for this, we've got some Binox hide, uh, Doomball brown, and Tuscal fur. And into this mix that I will be making up, I've got some uh, Evil Sun Scarlet to give it a little bit more of a reddish tint. So first of all, I'm take a nice bit of this. Uh, brown 
the uh, the Rhinox hide mixing a little bit of the red here and this is going to be obviously the base color so I'm just going to apply this over the uh, the black and obviously not worry too much about details as this is quite thin again obviously there's quite a few buckles and straps and stuff up here or buckles you know, around this strap but we will get to those later on for now we're just looking to get some good coverage on the straps themselves just trying to find the other uh, best angle for this so I think come from the top here now I'm not going to do um, as soft blends on this as I did with the armor um, I want to put a little bit more texture and uh, wear into the straps Right, next I'm going to take the, uh, the Dingle Brown, and that already has quite a bit of a red tint to it, so I'm not too, uh, I'm not going to add any more red to this. And all I'm going to do is basically try to stipple just some of the areas along this uh, strap. It's such a small area to try and get detail in. We just want to use some of the paint just to create a bit of texture on it. See the same on the back here. Don't need to do too much because again this is a little bit in shadow. I do want to get a bit of texture on there. And then I can take some of the uh, what was it? The Tusco fur. And this is just going to be used for just some very small texture de details hopefully the camera will pick some of this up Go and that's the straps pretty much done like I said not too much work to these at all just enough to get a little bit of texture highlights and you know some minor details and stuff in there right so now what I'm going to do is just super thin down 
a little bit of that Rhinox hide. And then just go over the top of all this just to sort of tie it together, blend it down a little bit. Um, this is pretty much a wash consistency, definitely thinner than a glaze. The idea is just to sort of mute the colours a little bit and uh, definitely bring out those edges and recesses. Right, so <clears throat> next up we've got the cloak. Oh, no, we said we were going to do the handle, didn't we? Um, just trying to think. Yeah, we'll do the handle in the same style. I know in the reference photo it is black, but this way we just get a little bit of extra colour down within the model. So all I'm going to do with this is just add that highlight that would be along there and then try and get some edge highlight in down along the edge and then with the lightest again we're just going to spot this right down there. So again super small details. But we got them in there. Right, so, and onto the eyes. Now we've got one in the center here, one on the knee pad, one on the spaldron, and then there's one on the backpack. And again, I will fix that in and then uh, we'll paint that. The colors for this, I'm going to use the Evil Suns Scarlet. The Troll Slayer Orange. So for that, I'll put that just out of the way down here. We don't need a lot of it. And the Flash Gits Yellow. And again, get it just out of the way. So first thing, Flash Gits Yellow. And I'm going to build this up try and get a nice yellow all around the eye. Now the reason I want to get it into the hole of the eye and not just the center is so that as I'm building this up I'm working with an even color scheme across the whole thing and not darker around the edges. As we all know with yellow, this is going to take a few passes to get it opaque. The backpack will do once we've done all of this one, because then I can put it on, paint it and then take it off once it's dry. And then we can get the uh, get working on the cloak.
All right, so I think to get these uh, smaller details, I'm going to switch to the size one. Now what I'm going to do is thin down this orange quite a bit. And then just concentrate that on the outside edges here. same on this piece just keep it on the outside edge Again, I want to build that opaque up, and then I can grab this yellow without cleaning the brush, and then stick it over the top. Just on where that join line is. Okay, so now I'm just going to build this up, getting more and more yellow into that centre again, and get it nice and bright. And then I can take some of this, uh, what is it, the Evil Sun Scarlet. Thin it down quite a bit, get it to a wash. And then I'm going to use the smallest brush I've got, which is a 2 and 0. Throw the uh, protective cap across the room because you know we don't need them. And uh, all I want to do now is literally try and line this and get it right down into that outside edge recess. Because we still want that orange showing just up against the edge. to do is just line this around the uh, the black part in the middle and then go back to the orange as I want it just a little bit more orange 
in here and a little bit less yellow. And then we can go back with the red. And it is just a case of backwards and forwards until it's as dark as I want it. See back to the red, and it's just the same process with each eye, really. It just gets a little bit more fiddly with the uh, smaller eyes. Okay, so with those done, and with this uh, size 2O, just going to paint in that central iris bit black. There we go. Right, so with those done, we can now move on to the backpack. And do the same thing, so just going to temporarily attach that with the blue tack. And the same thing. This time, just to save a bit of time, I'm just going to do it all with the 2 and O. It's a small one on the back here anyway. Just make sure I haven't missed one. There you go, look. Got one on the gun there. So good job I checked. Is it on the inside as well? No, just the outside. And then the sword doesn't have one.
Right, and then thin down that lid. Back into that yellow. Just stipple that back into the middle. There you go, and we'll leave that to dry. And that is that one done. Right, now I think what we'll do because I need to get the golds on here and I want to get the cape on but I also need to do a bit of sculpting with some green stuff up the top of the cloak here to get that to join up right I think what I'm going to do is do the golds in the next video and then we'll do the inside of the cloak um, off of the model so all I'll do is just a bit of blue tack on the back and we'll paint the inside just so that it's on here um, you know we'll get a deep red in there get that on sculpt it glue it and then we can do the outside and that will then be the model finished so I think for this video we will call it so a nice short video for this one and the next video will be going around and doing all of the metals so obviously that's the uh, the sword the gun the golds and whatever color it is supposed to be in the gauntlet and the knee guard here um, it looks like it's supposed to be more of a copperish type look um, so I think for that I'll use maybe screaming bell or something like that and then some Balthazar gold for the highlight and then for the gold itself, we'll go with the Retributor armor. And then uh, some Balthazar gold for the shadow type areas. And then some silver for the top. Um, the backpack. Now these things on the side, they do look in the reference photo very much more copperish, as does his gun, than gold. The gold seems to be on the studs, the trim and everything on this shoulder uh, pauldron, the guard here and the eagle uh, or the wing on both sides as well as the trim on the rest of the model um, but it's just that knee pad so for now it's the end of today's video guys thanks a lot for joining me on this one I hope you enjoyed it until the next one, keep painting those minis.